the overall theme of the session that uh, ASOCHAM has organized for today's next one hour, we are going to focus on steel. We all know the importance of the growth of iron and steel industry in the country like ours and what kind of role it can play to really boost the economic growth of the country, which includes definitely a lot of job creation uh, across the key clusters, uh, be it in the east, west or south, that it can create with a kind of growth that we can expect out of this particular uh, steel sector. Uh, we have a very eminent group of panelists today. Our Manuniya Mahanti Mahodai to saath mein hai and with his august presence, we will get to hear from him about government of India's views about the plans ahead that how to boost the growth of the steel sector. But apart from that, we have some uh, eminent personalities representing the sector at large, like Dr. Vinod Nawal. I'm sure Mr. V. R. Sarma is also joining us shortly, Mr. Ranjan Dhar, and like uh, on the on the transportation and logistics side, uh, we'll also get to hear something from Mr. Vinit Agarwal and, and others that what kind of challenges that we are facing on the transportation and logistics side and how we can resolve these issues so that in a in a much more smooth way we can we can expect the both the inbound and outbound logistics to play out uh, which is very 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 much required in order to get to get the growth out of this steel sector because all said and done the overall cost for freight uh, to take out material from point a to point b today in india is significantly high as compared to other developed economies and because we are too much dependent on road transport and our ability to uh, carry material from point A to point B either through rail or even through other waterways has not been has been limited so far it requires huge boosting I mean that we that that we all understand so with these uh, uh, few words I would like to hand over to Mr. Vinit Agarwal who is also the president of uh, ASOCHAM and I would like him to uh, really uh, set the context in a way by giving the welcome address. Mr. Agarwal, over to you, please. Thank you, Mr. Chakravarti. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Shri uh, Fagan Singh Ji, Honorable Minister of State, Ministry of uh, Steel, various dignitaries and speakers, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is my proud privilege to welcome Shri Fagan Singh Ji today who has kindly consented to give the address at this virtual session. Uh, as you are aware, this uh, virtual session on value creation through supply chain for the steel industry is very, very pertinent in the overall scheme of things and our uh, ongoing summit on global value chain, backward and forward integration. Uh, as India works towards being a manufacturing worker, powerhouse through policy initiatives like Make in India, the steel industry has a very important role to play. And uh, in this, both the primary and the secondary level, uh, the steel industry participants are revamping the approach towards production of steel and steel products by significantly transforming their supply chains. Among the many objectives include reducing supply side variabilities, technology adoption in all aspects of production, Aligning with ESG requirements, a robust logistics chain, greater access to new markets, and finally, better coordination and engagement with the customers. When we look at each aspect of this supply chain, we find there are many areas that are ripe for value creation. On the supply side, access, availability, and the right price of ore, scrap, coal, or any other input for production is imperative to ensure a continuous manufacturing process. Uh, this is done either through a backward integration or through deep supplier relationships from automation in handling systems to promote to promote uh, to promoting quantitative analysis and qualitative analysis are some of the ways to move up the value chain on the manufacturing side investment into r d for new and enhanced manufacturing methods for cost minimization process optimization and product maximization will lead to significant enhancement in supply chain efficiencies. 
with climate change a reality, a focus on environment, social governance, that is ESG practices, are especially critical for the steel sector. While the sector is acknowledged leader in recycling waste, focus on greater reuse of waste and better practices to reduce greenhouse gas emissions would propel the sector higher into the value chain. Uh, as Mr. Chakrabarti just mentioned about logistics, it is a critical aspect of value creation for the steel industry as it is a significant cost in the overall price of steel. Creating backward and forward linkages in transportation and to use multimodal transport moving from road to rail or to coastal shipping will not only reduce costs but also reduces carbon emissions. And last but not the least, by increasing product segmentation and value addition, steel companies can create access to new markets and customers and simultaneously increase their price realization. This also creates customer stickiness. A lot of government policies have been announced, and I'm sure the minister and the other members are going to talk about it. But I can definitely say that the goal towards value addition is very critical. ASUCHAM was one of the first uh, chambers in the country to actually recommend the manufacturing, I'm just giving an example, of shipping containers in India. As we know that we needed to reduce uh, the dependency of imports of shipping containers, as well as uh, propel the domestic industry, especially in these current times when we are seeing an acute shortage of containers in the world. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that the steel industry, even with COVID, will align itself towards our country's goal of a $5 trillion economy. We have some excellent speakers today, and I look forward to hearing from them uh, as we go forward. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Agarwal, uh, for setting the context and welcoming uh, the eminent list of panelists. You, If I have noted down one key point from your uh, setting the context, and I do kind of 100% agree on that, having working in this industry for the last 20 years, that if I look at the major challenges uh, for the growth of steel industry, one of the key areas of focus perhaps must be that how to integrate on the forward and backward side, especially if I may mention that specific focus is required uh, to really bring out the additional fresh demand from the downstream. Okay, by focusing a lot on the downstream and ancillary sectors. Unless the fresh demand in the domestic market also picks up, our per capita consumption in India is also not going to touch that coveted 200 kg that we are aspiring to achieve to from the current around 75 kg. So point noted, sir. And uh, if I may now uh, request uh, Dr. Vinod Nawal, who is the chairman of uh, the Iron and uh, Steel uh, National Council for ASOCHAM and definitely the Deputy Managing Director of JSW Steel, one of the largest uh, steel producing uh, companies uh, in the country today. And we would like to hear from him. Uh, sir, before you start your presentation, if I may just you know, ask one question and you can keep that in mind while delivering your overall uh, presentation or messages is, that today, uh, and I, I'll just carry forward from the point I just made, is that India has a high dependency on road logistics, OK, for now. Though government and many big players are actually investing in future or alternate modes of logistics, be it the railway siding and infrastructure, automated uh, loading in, onto the, onto the uh, rake, belt conveyors, slurry pipelines, et cetera, et cetera. But are we focusing on digital capability enough on how to automate many of these things in order to bring in efficiency into the overall transport and logistics management, both for inbound and outbound? So over to you, sir. We all, all ears to you. Thank you very much, uh, Vidyoti. A very good evening to everyone. First of all, I warmly welcome Sri Faggan Singh Ji, Honorable Minister of State, Ministry of Steel, Government of India. I also extend my warm, warm welcome to my co-panelists, 
eminent guests and all those who are attending this webinar. Shri Vinit Agarwalji, President SHM, Managing Director TCI. Shri Vidyut Chakrabarti, Director Mining and Metals Advisory KPMG. Shri Venkuta Sahu, General Manager. Shri VR Sharma, Co-Chairman SHM National Council on Iron and Steel and Managing Director JSPL. Shri Vivek Bhatia, MD and CEO, Thishan Group Industries. Shri Ranjan Dhar, Co-Chairman, SHM and National Council. I would like to begin by thanking SHM for having us here at this webinar to discuss a very pertinent topic value creation through supply chain for the steel industries. The theme and focus of this webinar gives a very strong, positive and reassuring message that on one hand, the economic activities are increasing rapidly, especially in our steel industry. And on the other, we need to actively explore and exercise all possible avenues to create value through full of scope supply chain management. Steel industry role is crucial for making India a 5 trillion USD economy due to rapid increase in production. Today, India has become the world's second largest producer of crude steel and the third largest consumer of the steel in the world after China and USA. We are also the largest producer of swan iron or DRA in the world today. However, despite all this, India's per capita consumption is still around 74 kg, which is just one third of the global steel consumption average of 22.4.5 kg. If we have to fulfill Honorable Prime Minister's Modi's dream of making India of 300 million ton, then we will have to increase the per capita steel consumption in the decade by 2030 in the range of 150 to 170 kg. I'm sure under the leadership of Honorable Minister of the Steel, this webinar will prove to be a great platform for discussions and brainstorming of the new opportunities and avenues for value creation in supply chain for a self-reliant Atmanirbhar Bharat. Value creation through the supply chain, as Vidyutji, you have mentioned about uh, on focus of the steel industry. There are few challenges and some steps steel industries are planning and taking it now, how we can mit mitigate all the challenges. ESG is becoming a very vital component in the supply chain. Both public and private companies are under increasing pressure from, from investors civil society and governments to make ambitious public commitments. Covering all aspects of ESG, but especially carbon emission. For a sustainable supply chain, we have to be future ready. Challenges for the steel industries to remain cost efficient while being ESG compliant. You know, today, if you compare with the world, our logistic cost is two and a half times if you compare with other industries with our competitors. To achieve this future ready supply chain needs to focus on following important areas, adopt breakthrough technology innovations with respect to energy efficiency and digitization. New green ways to transport bulk materials like pipe conveyors, slurry pipelines, coastal movements, etc. If you see now that there is a major focus on, especially on the slurry pipeline for steel industry to transport the iron ore. And that is it is a solution of the road transport and rail transport. And that is, in my opinion, one tenth of the cost. Use of alternate fuels such as CNG, biodiesel instead of diesel, electrical, EV, hydrogen in futuristic. Shift from road to rail. In case of, since I am from the JSW Steel, what steps JSW Steel is taking, I would like to share with the house and especially to the Mantriji. 
GSW Steel is committed to reduce its carbon footprint in the supply chain by almost 50% by 2030 without any significant impact on logistic cost. In fact, we will be more cost efficient in this process to achieve these few initiatives are already under the implementations. Deployment of the BFN, BFN, BFNV rigs, increasing rail model share by deploying more than 100 special designed higher capacity BFNV rigs for the transportation of the steel coils from plant to customers. It will reduce congestion at plant, transit as well as public goods sheds by increasing rate payload capacity by 50% and ability to handle coils by forklift, enabling it to handle the rake at any railway sidings. Development of state-of-the-art smart multimodal coastal hubs in India. This will help in increasing rail share and decongest existing public railways, goods sheds. This will also eliminate the material damages while unloading the stories. Transporting iron ore through slurry pipeline, as I mentioned earlier, and pipe conveyors. In Vijayanagar, we have put 24 kilometer pipe conveyor to transport 22 million. It's same way we are extending this type of the method of the material movement at all locations. Green supply chain, the conversion of the mining and heavy transport equipments like tippers, trucks, MBC, excavators, etc. Et from H H HSD to LNG, electric or hydrogen in future. Government should form a task force and special incentive for the, for the design. This is a request to the Mantriji. Development and deployment of the such engines shift towards larger vessel usage and port capacity expansion. That is also need of the time today. Green shipping shift towards larger vessel uses will reduce the carbon footprint. Deployment of the own vessels to increase coastal transportation. Currently, we are moving more than 15 million ton of the coastal cargo. I'm talking about our Dolby plant where we have just introduced 20 special design, 8,000 WT MBC and will deploy more with our capacity expansion is there. Digitization of the supply chain is the one of the key focus now. We are currently implementing several digitization projects in below focus area, which will improve visibility, efficiency, productivity, collaborations and reduce cost and carbon footprint. Real-time dashboard and data anal analytics blockchain, EDI and ePod, robotics and automation, real-time tracking and cloud computing, smart warehousing and network optimization, big data and artificial intelligence. This is the steps JSW Steel is taking and all the steel plants are also focusing it, but this is the requirement of the time and we, 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 we have to be competitive and we have to take all these steps now. Now we are looking forward to Honorable Steel Minister for your kind support towards our efforts and nation building. With that, I appreciate and thank each one of you for your patiently hearing to me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nawal. Uh, you have touched upon a few of the important uh, points. Uh, that today that we are probably caught between the growth story uh, for which we are dependent on fossil fuels with the kind of historical strength that we are carrying vis-a-vis -vis the requirements of ESG today, which cannot be ignored for tomorrow. That is also as important as the growth that we are aspiring to achieve. So that's a, that's a good dilemma to be solved by all uh, participants in the industry government and industry and, and and industry representations as well second you have also touched upon the point about having a task force to look into the green supply chain opportunities in whatever optimization possible 
across the clusters where iron and steel are present in India today and the future growth of expansion that we are aspiring in the states of Odisha or Karnataka or Chhattisgarh. Point well taken, sir. I'm sure that we are going to debate further as we go along. Uh, just uh, if I may now request uh, Mr. Sharma, I hope you're there, uh, Mr. Vihar Sharma, who is the MD of uh, JSPL and also the co-chairman of Iron and Steel of ASOCHAM. If I may now request you, sir, I know you will share your thoughts, but I will start with a question for you that with the kind of expansion plans that are announced and some are also in principle approved by the respective state governments. I'm, I'm aware that JSPL is having a very aggressive expansion plan in Odisha, like Angul, they want to achieve 25 plus million ton in next few years. So you have been observing the growth story and the kind of growth expansion plans all of us have looking at the NSP targets by 2030-31. What are the key learnings or takeaways, okay, in terms of pitfalls that we have observed till date, which can be avoided if we really want to achieve those targets on time, okay, as we go along to, if not 300 million ton, let's say 250 million ton of steel can be achieved by next 10 years. So over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you and good afternoon. Manani Sri Kurushte Saab, Mantri Mohde Ji, Mere Baki Sabhi Saathiyo, Shri Dr. Nawal Ji, Shri Sahu Ji, Shri Vivek Bhatia Ji, Shri Unit Agarwal Ji, and Shri Vidut Chakravarti Saab. Dhanyavad, you have given me this ghosti in this ghosti. Manani Sri Kurushte Saab, मंत्री महोदय जी बार-बार हमको किसने किसी गोष्टी में मिलते हैं और हमारा हौसला अफजाई करते हैं मैं उनका आता है दिल से शुक्रिया अदा करता हूं और आपके एफर्ट्स और आपके जो सूझबूझ है उसकी वजह से स्टील इंडस्ट्री ने काफी कुछ अपना मुकाम हासिल किया है मुझे उम्मीद है कि आपका सहयोग और आपका जो जो आपकी मार्गदर्शन है वो स्टील इंडस्ट्री को हमेशा ऊपर उठाती रहेगी बहुत ही अच्छा लगता है जब हम इस टाइप के टॉपिक के ऊपर बात करते हैं आज का जो टॉपिक है वो सप्लाई चेन मैनेजमेंट के ऊपर हम लोग काम कर रहे हैं सर मैं सभी जो मेरे श्रोतागण हैं और जो मेरे सभी को पैनलिस्ट हैं मैं उनको कुछ एक पॉइंट्स के ऊपर लेके जाना चाहूँगा टुडे वी आर एट लेवल अबाउट वन हंड्रेड टेन मिलियन टन प्रोडक्शन इन द कंट्री and uh, rightly said by uh, Mr. Chakravarti, we intend to go to 300 million ton in next nine years' time. It's a Herculean task. Everybody knows that uh, the challenges are many and how to do it. And the biggest problem will be in times to come, that is logistic. As my uh, friend, uh, Dr. Lawal, uh, he has already explained that there is a shortage of uh, uh, railway links, there is a shortage of uh, right uh, capacity of the goods trains, there is shortage of wagons in the, in the country, there is shortage of port facilities in the country, there is shortage of uh, uh, harbor uh, vessels, in which can, uh, India is a very long, uh, 7,000 kilometers of the coastal land, and uh, we should transport material from Haldia to Kandla and Kandla to Haldia to the coastal route, then by uh, overloading uh, the, uh, the railway or by trucks. ESG, of course, it is a uh, big issue and uh, all of us, we have to reduce the overall CO2 emission. And this is what uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Naval, he emphasized uh, in his uh, opening remarks and speech. And also Mr. Agarwal, he also spoke the same thing that how to reduce the overall ECG load. So the point here is uh, we need about 4.5 ton of the raw materials to produce one ton of steel today uh, through the blast furnace route. And, uh, you know, we are sitting in Odisha, and uh, in Odisha's calculation is following that we spend more than 5,000 rupees per ton uh, for the incoming raw material, and then we spend about 3,000 rupees per ton on the finished goods. So that means for one ton of steel, we consume or we spend about 8,000 rupees. So 8,000 rupees is a huge cost, uh, which ultimately a customer has to bear. So like, for example, today TMT or rebar prices are at about... Uh, 55,000 or 56,000 rupees out of that 8,000 rupees is a huge cost. So that is about 14 to 15%. On an average, 
the steel industry today is paying about uh, 11 to 12 percent uh, 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 towards the freight cost. So we have to see that how to uh, make the network uh, enable and also make the uh, network feasible so that the railway network is available to each and every uh, port to plant and plant to ports. One, number two, there should not be any congestion or the restriction at the ports. The port facilities are to be enhanced. Manne Mantri Mahode Ji, I would like to tell you that four Bharat ki four ports ke upar, jiske andar Haldia, Vishaka Patanam, uh, Gopalpur, or uh, Paradip. ये चार पोर्ट्स के ऊपर आज करीब 15 लाख टन माल पड़ा हुआ है जो कि एक्सपोर्ट के लिए जाना है इतनी स्थिति इतनी भयंकर है कि वहां पे ना मटेरियल रखने की जगह है हमारे जो ऑर्डर्स हैं वो कैंसिल हो रहे हैं तो आपके सहयोग की इसके अंदर और आपके मार्गदर्शन की जरूरत है कि आप मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ शिपिंग और पोर्ट अथॉरिटी से हमारे ब्याह पे बात करिए कि कैसे हम ज्यादा से ज्यादा वेसल लगा के इस माल की निकासी कर सकते हैं इसी प्रकार से बहुत सारे जहाज अनलोडिंग के लिए खड़े हुए हैं तो जब तक हम पोर्ट की व्यवस्थाओं को नहीं सुधारेंगे भारत का जो सपना है 5 ट्रिलियन डॉलर का और उसके अंदर से हमारे को 2 ट्रिलियन डॉलर का एक्सपोर्ट करना है शायद वो सपना साकार नहीं हो पाएगा और भारत जो है वो आत्मनिर्भर भारत नहीं बन पाएगा मेरा आपसे आग्रह है मेरा अनुरोध है कि आप हमारी जो स्टील इंडस्ट्री है और जो बाकी यूजर इंडस्ट्री हैं उन सब के तरफ से आप प्रधानमंत्री कार्यालय में बात करें या आप जहाज रानी मंत्री से बात करें कि कैसे हम पोर्ट्स की दशा को सुधार सकते हैं दूसरी चीज मैं आपको बताना चाहूंगा कि बीच बीच में रिस्ट्रिक्शन लग जाता है तीन दिन चार दिन के लिए रेलवे लाइन बंद हो जाती है गुड्स ट्रेन जहाँ पे खड़ी है वहीं पर जाके खड़ी हो जाती है और एक मूवमेंट भी नहीं हो पाता एक किलोमीटर का भी ये भी एक बहुत बड़ी समस्या है भारत के सामने जिसका निवारण आपको ही करना पड़ेगा सरकार सब कुछ कर सकती है और सरकार ही आगामी 10 साल के लिए जो सोच रही है कि वी हैव टू प्रोड्यूस 300 मिलियन टन प्रोडक्शन इन दिस कंट्री एंड आउट ऑफ दैट मोर देन 50 मिलियन टन विल बी एक्सपोर्टेड 250 मिलियन टन विल बी कंज्यूम्ड विद इन दियर विद इन द कंट्री ये संभव नहीं हो पाएगा जब तक कि हम अपनी पोर्ट्स की दशाओं को या जो अभी दुर्दशा है जिसका उसका उच्च सुधार सुधारते नहीं है इसके अलावा माननीय मंत्री महोदय जी और मेरे जो सभी साथी हैं मैं आपको ध्यान आकर्षण करना चाहूंगा कि कम से कम 20 पोर्ट भारत के अंदर और बननी चाहिए जो भारत का एक कानून है कि 22 किलोमीटर 70 किलोमीटर के दायरे में दूसरी पोर्ट नहीं आ सकती शायद इसको बदलना पड़ेगा जहां पे भी डीप वाटर है वहां पे एक नहीं 10 10 पोर्ट हमको बनानी चाहिए ताकि भारत से माल की निकासी हो पाए ना कि एक्सपोर्ट के लिए बल्कि डोमेस्टिक मार्केट के लिए भी एज माई फ्रेंड डॉक्टर नवल हेज टोल्ड दैट वी नीड अ कोस्टल सर्विस फ्रॉम Uh, golden harbor or from haldia uh, to kandla i mean unless we do this we cannot achieve uh, the dream of 300 million ton uh, steel production as mr uh, uh, mr chakravarti mr vidya chakravarti you asked a question that what is going to happen the expansions how the expansions are going to be what do we need so that we can reach to that level i like to tell that the 300 million ton is a dream of government of india and government of india is bent upon fulfilling this dream because they have already envisaged and calculated that this is going to be steel production and this is going to be steel consumption in times to come. When China can consume more than 1,000 million ton, that is 1 billion ton steel, why can't we consume 300 million ton having the almost similar population directly or indirectly? So this is what uh, is required. This is a country's dream. And to fulfill the country's dream, we have to have all this infrastructure in place be it road, be it railways, be it waterways. Manya Mantri Mohde Ji ko mein unka dhyan akrashan karna chahunga ki aapne jo hai wo Ganga Sagar se leke aur Varanasi tak aapne ferry service shuru ki jiske andar abhi tak mass scale ke oopar maal ki dhulai nahi ho rahi hai. Aamko dekhna padega ki jab isse chhoti nadi jo ki jis nadi ka naam hai Sain River jo ki Germany se bhehti hai, Bulgaria se nikalti hai aur ja ke अटलांटिक ओशन में जाके पड़ती है जब उस नदी के अंदर पूरे यूरोप का 37 प्रतिशत कारोबार हो सकता है तो हमारी गंगा नदी में भी हो सकता है हम खाली टेक्नोलॉजी की आवश्यकता है पानी को भरने की आवश्यकता है पानी को रोकने के लिए अनेक डैम बनाने की आवश्यकता है और पानी को जहाज को ऊपर उठाने के लिए वाटर को पंपिंग करके जहाज को ऊपर उठाने की व्यवस्था करनी पड़ेगी 
जो कि टेक्नोलॉजी 1910 से वहां पर चल रही है उस टेक्नोलॉजी को आज हम 2020 में और 2030 में भी नहीं लगा पाए तो ये हमारे लिए एक बहुत ही दुख का विषय है हमारी इतनी बड़ी बड़ी नदियां हैं मैं कहता हूं हरिद्वार तक हम वाटरवेज यूज कर सकते हैं अगर जो हम सही प्रकार से गंगा के वाटरवेज का पर ध्यान दिया जाए तो इसके अंदर बहुत बड़ा कार्य हो सकता है तो मेरा माय माय पॉइंट टू ऑल ऑफ माय माय कोलीग्स एंड डिग्नेटरीज इज दैट वी हैव टू बैंक अपॉन ऑन द वाटरवेज विद इन द कंट्री व्हेन इन इन साइन रिवर एंड राइन रिवर व्हेन 37% ऑफ द टोटल ट्रैफिक ऑफ यूरोप कैन बी मैनेज्ड देन व्हाई कांट इट बी डन इन इंडिया सो दिस इज व्हाट इज रिक्वायर्ड टुडे आई थिंक दैट इज व्हाट द फ्यूचर ऑफ दिस कंट्री फॉर टुमारो the privatization drive taken by government of india is very welcome it's excellent but we have to see that when we do the privatization we do not bank upon on few on few business houses because if we go for the few business houses then the efficiencies will be a question mark because each and every person government organizations private sector public sector has some limitations on the administrative capabilities if one business house two business house or 10 business houses they are going to uh, control the entire logistics then it will be a very very difficult situation because it will be impossible for anyone to manage and to have those administrative capabilities and capacities that we can uh, manage this show very perfectly so we have to see government of india will have to see how to uh, allocate uh, the resources to the people so that that will be useful for the industry and as a cost effective point and the cost effective price that is also most important uh dusra point mai mananiya mukhya mantri sahab se shri kulaste sahab se aagrah karna chahunga ki aaj bharat ki jitni bhi port hain unke upar agar jo koi bhi jahaz aata hai to usko south east asia jo country hai dakshin purva country hai uske andar unke crew ko change karne ki anumati nahi di jati jiski wajah se wo jo jahaz hain वो या तो भारत की बंदरगाहों पर आते नहीं है और आते हैं तो उनको 22 22 दिन इंतजार करना पड़ता है हाई के अंदर जब तक उनका क्वारंटाइन पूरा नहीं होता तो मेरा आपसे आग्रह है मंत्री महोदय जी कि आप भारत सरकार से अनुरोध करके और डिप्लोमेटिक लेवल पे जितने भी मुल्क हैं जितने कंट्रीज हैं उनसे बात करें ताकि भारत की जो भारत को जो टच करके जो भी वेसल जा रहे हैं तो वो वेसल्स सही समय पे वो माल को अनलोड कर पाए और अपने गंतव्य स्थान पर पहुंच पाए अनलेस वी टेक अप दैटर थ्रू दिप्लोमेटिक चैनल गवर्नमेंट ऑफ चाइना फिलीपींस मलेशिया इंडोनेशिया थाईलैंड वी विल बी अनेबल टू मीट आउट द एक्सपोर्ट ऑब्लिगेशन एंड दॉस्ट ऑफ प्रेट विल कीप ऑन इंक्रीजिंग डे बाई डे जो दस हजार डॉलर से ग्यारह हजार डॉलर भाड़ा होता था मंत्री मोदी जी आज वो जो भाड़ा है वो पैंतीस हजार से चालीस हजार डॉलर जा चुका है तो उसको हमें कंट्रोल करना पड़ेगा तभी हम भारत की व्यवस्था को सुधार पाएंगे और हमें डिप्लोमेटिक लेवल से हमारे को इनके अंदर सुधार की आवश्यकता है दूसरा मैं मंत्री मोदी जी से आग्रह करना चाहूंगा कि आप जो हमारी फ्लाइट्स हैं जो फ्लाइट्स को स्टार्ट करवाइए पूरे यूरोप के साथ और ईस्टर्न ईस्टर्न कंट्रीज के साथ में ताकि बहुत सारे जो इमरजेंसी के अंदर जो हमको सामान चाहिए वो हम बाई एयर मंगा पाए आज की डेट में क्योंकि फ्लाइट सारी बंद है तो कोई भी एयर कार को भी सही सुचारू रूप से नहीं चल रहे हैं तो इसके लिए भी हम आपको आग्रह करेंगे कि आप भारत सरकार से बात करके और बायोलैट्रल एग्रीमेंट के माध्यम से काइंडली आप फ्लाइट्स की आवागमन के ऊपर जो अभी आज रोक लगी हुई है उस रोक को हटाने का उस प्रतिबंध को हटाने की चेष्टा करें तो ये भारत की इंडस्ट्री के लिए बहुत ही लाभदायक रहेगा दूसरा एक लास्ट पॉइंट मैं आपको बोलना चाहूंगा कि आज जो भारत के अंदर पावर की जो दशा है जो पावर की कॉस्ट है अगर जो टोटल यूनिट हम देख लें और टोटल बिल है जितना आता है उसको यूनिट से डिवाइड करें तो दस रुपए से सत्रह रुपए तक भारत के अंदर पावर मिलती है आज भारत के अंदर स्क्रैप पॉलिसी आप लेके आए लेकिन उस स्क्रैप का इस्तेमाल जहां पे स्क्रैप पैदा होगा वहां पे नहीं हो पाएगा क्योंकि वहां पे बारह रुपया चौदह रुपया पंद्रह रुपया पावर की कॉस्ट है जो कि इलेक्ट्रिक आर्ट फर्नेस अगर जो कोई लगाता है तो उसको करीब आठ से नौ हजार रुपया पावर की कॉस्ट पड़ेगी तो वो प्लांट वायबल नहीं रहेगा आपका जो सपना था कि हम ई के ऊपर ध्यान देंगे सीओ टू को रिडक्शन करेंगे वो सपना साकार जब तक नहीं हो पाएगा जब तक कि हम भारत में एक भारत एक इलेक्ट्रिसिटी टैरिफ की आह्वान नहीं करेंगे पूरे भारत में एक ही इलेक्ट्रिसिटी का टैरिफ होना चाहिए जो कि साढ़े चार या पांच रुपए के मध्यम होना चाहिए पांच रुपए अगर जो पावर पूरे भारत में कश्मीर से कन्याकुमारी तक मिलती है तो भारत के अंदर हर जगह पे 
स्टील के लिए इलेक्ट्रिक कार फर्नेसिस लग पाएंगी और वो चल पाएंगी अन्यथा ये एक बहुत बड़ा एक नुकसान होगा देश को कि सारा का सारा स्क्रैप जो पैदा होगा वो नॉर्दर्न इंडिया और वेस्टर्न इंडिया में होगा और वो फिर रास्ता उसको मिलेगा जाने के लिए कि उसका इस्तेमाल जो होगा वो होगा सेंट्रल इंडिया में या ईस्टर्न इंडिया में तो ये बहुत बड़ा क्रॉस क्रिस मूवमेंट हो जाएगा जिससे कि फ्रेट की भी बहुत ज्यादा हानि होगी और जो हम सीओ रिडक्शन करने की सोच रहे हैं उल्टा सीओ बढ़ जाएगा क्योंकि ट्रकों के जरिए ये माल जाएगा ट्रेन के जरिए माल जा नहीं जा सकता तो इसलिए मेरा आपसे अनुरोध है कि कृपया इसके ऊपर भी ध्यान दीजिए कि कब हम एक भारत एक बिजली की दर के ऊपर हम आ सकते हैं जितना जल्दी हम आएंगे उतना ही भारत के लिए बेनिफिट रहेगा सो दीज आर माई फ्यू सजेशन आई ट्राई टू कम्युनिकेट टू गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया आई ट्राई टू कम्युनिकेट टू ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर आई टू ट्राई टू कम्युनिकेट टू ऑल माई फेलो पैनलिस्ट ईयर कंट्री इज डेफिनेटली इमर्जिंग एज ए वेरी लार्ज पावर बट दीज आर दूज वॉट वी है the other last point i like to tell that the cooking coal prices in in international market are today 240 to 250 dollars per metric ton fob australia what has happened china is not buying from australia china is buying from ukraine buying from russia buying from venezuela colombia and america and the european countries are buying from australia we are buying from australia so there is a criss cross movement the indian ocean is full of vessels coal vessels today cooking coal vessels and from north from west the vessels are coming to east and from east the vessels are going to uh, to west so this is something very uh, very unfortunate that the international resources are being uh, utilized in different manner and most of the time the vessels are in water and this takes about 50 to 60 days time and that has created the shortage of water shortage of vessels in the whole world the other shortage of vessels we are seeing not only vessels also containers so that is because because of this current time issues everywhere all of the ports are stuck up especially in southeast asian countries and the the vessel, empty vessels are not coming so my request to government of india is to please work on coal gasification you have already taken a plan that you will be doing 100 million ton of coal gasification in this country manya mantri mohde ji aapne declare kiya tha aur uh, pradhan sahab ne declare kiya tha ki hum 100 million ton koyle ko coal gas mein banayenge to wo samay ab aa gaya hai कि कोल गैस बना के जिसे सिम गैस बोलते हैं उससे हमको डीआरआई बनाना चाहिए स्पोन जारन और स्पोन जारन से इलेक्ट्रिक कार फर्नेस के माध्यम से हमारे को उसके अंदर स्टील बनाना चाहिए जिससे कि हमारी जो टोटल सीओ टू एमिशन है वो हाफ हो जाती है हाफ से भी कम हो जाती है तो 50 परसेंट से भी कम हो जाती है तो जो भारत का एक कमिटमेंट है इंटरनेशनल लॉबी को पेरिस प्रोटोकॉल के अंदर हम उसको भी निभा पाएंगे और भारत का जो अनवॉन्टेड कोल है जिसको लोग पसंद नहीं करते हैं वो एक डायमंड है उसको भी हम इस्तेमाल कर पाएंगे कोल गैसिफिकेशन की बहुत अच्छी अच्छी टेक्नोलॉजीज अवेलेबल है जिसको कि हम अपने पूरे ईस्टर्न ब्लॉक जो हमारा पूर्वोदय का जो एक सपना है वो पूर्वोदय उसी से हो सकता है जब हम कोल को गैसीफाई करें कोल से पावर बनाएं कोल से फर्टिलाइजर बनाएं कोल से लिक्विड बनाएं कोल से मैथनॉल बनाए कोल से डीजल बनाए कोल से पेट्रोल बनाए और कोल से सिंगैस के माध्यम से डीआरआई बनाए और डीआरआई से स्टील बनाए इलेक्ट्रिक कार फर्नेस में so these are my uh, humble suggestions and request to honorable minister and to my all of the friends hope everybody must have understood what i have spoken in hindi and english mix so that it uh, at large the message is, message goes loud loud and clear thank you very much namaskar thank you so much uh, mr sharma you have made some uh, four five key points which i could note down and just for the very very quick summary of the key points that you have already made that one is definitely looking into the port infrastructure enhancement with new ports for plus the usage of technologies to debottleneck uh, the existing capacities of the existing ports second you also made the point about the privatization of the assets like nil rinl and others uh, just to ensure that the assets reach uh, uh, in the in the larger uh, group of hands and not in the hands of only a few players so that the assets are distributed a uh, kind of if not evenly a uh, widespread distribution happens and the ecosystem can exist or coexist uh, peacefully with the with the sustainable and profitable growth aspirations third point you made about the coking coal issues uh, there is a business case for rationalization of linkages so that the delivered cost as well as the debottlenecking can happen in the pacific ocean okay and you also 
emphasized on the importance of the usage of coal through coal gasification and other means in order to overall achieve a lesser cot emission that the uh, that the country is anyway aspiring for uh, so these are the key points which are noted sir and i'm sure mantri mahodai will uh, you know kind of respond to all these points while he will deliver his speech just very quickly moving on if i may now request uh, sri ranjan dhar the chief marketing officer of arcelormittal nepal steel he is also one of the co chairmen of the iron and steel national council at asocham uh, mr dhar uh, when you start if i may ask one question to you as well and you can just touch upon during uh, your speech that since the first half of this calendar year we have observed that whatever decline we had to see in the last financial year especially in the first half uh, has been compensated a lot by the growth in demand both in domestic market a little bit but largely driven by the export market especially china uh, and we we saw a kind of i would not like to use the word skyrocketing but uh, efficient increase in prices of steel because of which uh there was some kind of uh, upward uh, movement in prices which everybody got benefited out of especially the isps and how do you see this particular trend to continue over the next 2 to 3 years especially looking at the domestic steel market in india and do you also think that the indian steel industry especially the large isps need to revisit their sales strategy while they are focusing on export because there is so much of latent demand already exists in the domestic market your thoughts on that over to you uh, sridhar thank you bidit uh, yeah right, so sir. i will uh, i will answer bidju's question first and then i will go to the uh, the, the supply chain part and the forward integration and backward integration part because this this topic keeps on coming and uh, you know much has been also said about this topic but uh, we'll clarify a little bit about uh, what is being said about the price and the supply and then first and foremost we have to understand uh, that all this while when the international prices were at you know at a high range india always and even today has operated at a discount and keeps discount uh, the discount uh, from different market to market the different product to product has reached between 100 dollars to as high as 300 to 400 तो जो भारत के जो प्राइजेस थे वो अंतर्राष्ट्रीय प्राइजेस से हमेशा ही कम रहे पूरे पूरे पीरियड में तो जब अंतर्राष्ट्रीय बाजार में प्राइस बढ़ा तो इंडिया में भी बढ़ा लेकिन हमेशा इंडियन जो कंज्यूमर है उनको फायदा हुआ कि इंडियन प्राइजेस विदेशी बाजार के तुलना में हमेशा कम रहे ऑलवेज लोअर सो नेचुरली इंडियन कंज्यूमर हैज गॉट Uh, was an advantageous situation as opposed to any consumer, steel consumer internationally. Now, whether Indian steel producers uh, prioritized export versus uh, domestic. If you see, अगर आप अगर हम आंकड़े आंकड़े लेते हैं January onwards, January में भी international prices were higher than the domestic prices, but the exports were minimal. i think the january export number was below 10% of uh, the entire industry so exports will always be inversely proportional to the domestic demand uh, whenever the domestic demand is low international prices uh, international uh, you know the exports are high and whenever the domestic demand is high exports are low you will see in the data pattern when you see covid wave one in last year exports went high as high as 50% covid wave 2 in this year from april onwards export went high uh, so uh, it will be wrong to say that uh, any indian steel producer prioritize exports versus domestic it is not true first and foremost the domestic demand is met fully and then uh, we go to the uh, international market uh, coming under the price ye bahut zaruri hai humko janna ki जो तो, स्टील uh, इंडस्ट्री का हेल्थ है उसके स्वास्थ्य के लिए uh, जब ये कमोडिटी साइकिल्स आते हैं 
पांच आठ साल में दस साल में एक बारी या दो बारी ये साइकिल बहुत जरूरी है ताकि इंडस्ट्री के बैलेंस शीट स्ट्रॉन्ग हो और बैलेंस शीट स्ट्रॉन्ग होने के बाद नया इन्वेस्टमेंट साइकिल स्टार्ट जो अभी आप देख रहे हैं कि हमारे को इंडस्ट्री के हिसाब से थ्री हंड्रेड टन पे जाना है ऑल द स्टील प्रोड्यूसर्स है बिग कैपेक्स टॉकिंग अबाउट अवर कंपनी आसमिकॉन स्टील विच इज अव कंपनी जो दो हजार उन्नीस एंड में एस आर सी ने अक्वायर किया उस एक्विजिशन के बाद हमारे चेयरमैन ने अभी रिसेंटली बताया कि वी आर इन्वेस्टिंग नियरली हंड्रेड थाउजेंड करोड़ इन द न्यू कैपेक्स साइकिल and like uh, likewise all my friends and my and other steel companies have announced huge capex these capex will not happen and the financial companies will not fund these capexes if the industry's financial health is not so it is important that we do not disincentivize the periods uh, which are healthy periods for the industry because industry also has to grapple with a healthy period financially so uh, on a long term average basis it is important not to disincentivize these periods then only new capex uh, will happen in the industry and and coming to the today's topic it is important from even today's topics perspective that the new capex happens then only the supply chain gets uh, you know developed aaj ki date mein kya ho raha hai aaj hamare jo apne covid ke period mein dekha supply chain disruptions hua abhi auto industry is grappling with a huge shortage of semiconductor I was with Maruti Suzuki recently. They have a demand of around two lakh cars. Their demand is about a month. But Maruti Suzuki, one lakh twenty thousand, one lakh twenty thousand cars are not being built because they are not semiconductor. Semiconductor is very important. Exports that Tata Group has recently said that we are setting up something in India. Likewise, the supply chain is very important. 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 Likewise, the abhi imported imported api is not available or not price viable now they are coming back to the indian steel industry and indian steel industry also has to further enhance our api capacities so all this entire uh, virtuous cycle is linked somewhere so we need to have capex we need to have uh, investments which will on a long term basis support the domestic demand and domestic need so one important aspect of the whole thing digitization i think mr sharma spoke about it a little earlier uh, and also i think dr nawal uh, it is very important that this entire supply chain in india gets digitized the reason is uh, if you see uh, earlier lot of emphasis was not given into creating value out of the supply chains i will give you one example a live example today what happens is when we supply all of us supply to auto industry on at the contractual prices now in the absence of digitization what happens is a loose contract is done they said okay this is the price settled for 6 months you supply to our vendors and vendors then in turn make components and supply to the auto industry when there is digitization is not there there are lot of leakages which happen steel industry the, the net steel supplied by steel industry to the vendors and what vendors supply to the auto industries there is a leakage something they they supply to the market because the contractual prices are lower than the uh, than the, the spot market prices so they do not convert everything into components and something goes into the market we have noticed some of one or two example one or two such examples and when digitization happens these leak uh, uh, you know couple of auto oems and when uh, the big ones they are currently implementing huge digitization program to arrest these leakages because otherwise what Steel industries are uh, building for the for the benefit of the customer, not getting fully captured in absence of uh, end to end and uh, digitization, and uh, the benefit are accrued. Uh, somebody at uh, the intermediate stage it does not go to the last mile. Um, so I think it is all very important that we keep the steel industry incentivized for the capex to happen for the ultimate. Uh, the consumers and Mr. Sharma just said to uh, Honorable Minister is that uh, the power cost uh, and the different sets in different states, जो अलग अलग state में अलग अलग power sets हैं, पुरीसा में point five five rupees per kilo H है और झारखंड में point one five है, तो एक power sets और power sets should be bought under GST 
so that this uh, cost disadvantage for the steel industry is not there. Even uh, uh, Niti Aayog has said that the uh, Hindustan ki, India ki jo steel company has 80 to 100 dollar ke cost disadvantage mein hai as opposed to other industry, other uh, countries, steel industry in other countries. So, this is the need to see that if the steel industry is competitive ready ki, on a long term basis, so the supply chain of Bharat ka jo manufacturing sector is competitive. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Sridhar. Uh, you have made uh, one of the important points which really stuck me and I have been also thinking around this that huge amount of capital investment is required to get to that level of 300 million ton. So just to put numbers in perspective, we have around 142 million ton of uh, announced fruit steel capacity in the country, primary, secondary, milake. So in order to reach to 300, we have to add 158. If we take around a ballpark number of 7000 crore per million ton, we need huge amount of money to be pumped in to reach to that level of 300 million ton of crude steel capacity. 70-30, if debt equity ratio, it will be around 105 billion dollars that we need from banks and other financial institutions. So it's a it's a serious challenge. There can be solutions on the table, but definitely a point to ponder upon uh, when we are aspiring for such kind of growth, especially considering that iron and steel as a sector is actually sitting on a huge debt book at this point in time. So this is a challenge in itself. Point noted, sir. Quickly uh, moving on, I know a couple of other speakers and we would like to hear from them as they are not representing steel, but very important role play in order to uh, talk about the challenges that we are facing there before we can actually request the uh, Honorable Minister to share his thoughts. So very quickly, if I can just now request Mr. Boykantha Shahu, who is the General Manager Easy Hall, to share his uh, point of view on the theme of this of today's discussion. Mr. Shahu, over to you. Good evening, Good evening. Mr. Shahu. Yeah, over to you. And if I may just request, uh, it's a it's my polite request to all of you. If you can just restrict around say five to seven minutes to share your thoughts, because we are running a little late and we would like to hear from the ministers of, uh, about his detailed speech. So just, just a thought to highlight to you. Now, sir, over to you. Uh, so I'm just going to give a small introduction about my company, what my what we are going to discuss today. So it's normally about the what the road freight requirement for the steel and mining sector. So myself, Baikun Sau, I'm taking care of the uh, sales and operation of Odisha steel in the iron industry of road transportation. Uh, about our company, so this is actually a new company in the India. So this company is found in 2018. And we are doing a good job in the road industry. So in last two year time frame, we have grown around 15% growth, uh, marginal growth in every month. And there's a few clients we are working with like JSW, PD Light, Reliance, Geo. And currently we have around all Asia Pacific countries like Singapore, Philippines, Malaysia, India, these are the 767 country currently we are working with. So what is the steel value chain and how supply value chain is support to this industry? So this is from starting from mining industry to the finished product. In, in between the production also be there. And so this is the sub steel value chain and how supply value chain is support starting from the raw material like iron, coal, cooking coal to plant through, uh, through production center then from plant to the end consumer. So we are supporting the road transportation also. So there is a many obstacle is there in between from mines to plant movement also like there is a road condition not good, not good at all. There is a local issues, association issues, there is only multiple issues there. So that kind of problem we are facing on the regular interval to give the service to the our clients. The same way we are trying to keep adding much and more carrier in your platform so that you can give the better service to our client so that we can have the uh, increase the business volume and give the real-time transportation solutions 
on the this kind of facility that you want to give to so currently in odisha we have normally working with the major sector at kendujar barbil locations so from where from there that location we are giving the dispatch the material to jharkhand chatisgarh paradi port gopalpur port so other part of the india also for the iron ore movement movement so currently we are already working with many clients from the steel industry these are the few steel industry names like mittal bhushan jw whom we are working with so in last 18 months time frame we are already acquired the good client in, a, in our platform and kept some good image in our platform also because of our because in current scenario in not single local transporter doing the iron ore coal miner business but the not a, any big organization like the eg or some other company not interfere in the same kind of operations so now we go to do the business such kind of operation in odisha odisha segment so we hope we can get some more clients in this segment and increase the more business so what are the challenges you are facing in the mining logistic industry so there is a because there is a huge high uh, fragmental then multiple layer of internal the because there is a different kind of uh, road transporter competitor is there then the high logistic cost because the fuel cost is there local issue cost is there bill village are also demanding the many much money so there is just still the cost is has side so there is some challenges also every day we are facing the steel industry as well as the logistic industry facing in every day like manual process steel logistic industry not the digitalization platform so everyone looking for doing the manual process lack of there is no tracking that no proper tracking the vehicle where the vehicle exactly they are and when the vehicle will be reported and when the shipment will be delivered there is nothing the proper system is not there so what is your is doing we are create opportunity to how we can service to our client and give the better services like real time reporting and how the digital expression working working how the price is tra transferring to everyone to the client to the vendor to the end consumer also this type of facility we are trying to get for better solutions so my mr shahu if i may request you to kindly cover in next one or two minutes yes sure 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 so just going to the next so actually ideal give the real date tracking like the when the vehicle is loaded and when the vehicle is unloaded on what the material where is the material on one uh, full detail of the carrier detail is not about the uh, we bring the vehicles from the market and give the service to the client it's not about like that we need to do the verification of the carrier that who are working with us so that we can the uh, security of the material to the client this type of we can give the kpi like that on a in which segment how much money we are spending in which route what is the unloading amount we are paying in each route so that we can minimize that cost by providing such kind of report on weekly basis or monthly basis so how already everyone know that the industry 4.1 is implemented in the year of 2011 so this actually help for the uh, logistic industry as of now because the automation facility they are data storage full data transparency is there so everyone know that oh, when the shipment is there where is the shipment and when the shipment is required so actually i want to close this because i did not spend much time with you because the time already gone out so i can close and in future i want to spend with everyone you know how we can be, build a better solution logistic solution with you and how easy will be part of their company that was really nice uh, by kunta sahu sir uh, uh, we we got a glimpse of what easy hall does and what kind of solution propositions you have uh, for the larger steel industry in order to uh, resolve the issues that logistic has been facing thank you so much for your uh, uh, brief but precise speech uh, if i may just uh, now request uh, sri vivek bhatia who is the md and ceo of thisin group industries india 
to share his views, please. Mr. Bhatia. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chakravarti. And I'm conscious of time, so I'll stick to the time limit you've given. Yeah. So firstly, uh, uh, Honorable Minister Sri Kulasteji and all the fellow panelists, I think thank you for a wonderful discussion. <clears throat> And I, I want to start uh, slightly broadly. Uh, you know, we have set an ambitious goal in India of a five trillion dollar economy, and I think on the one hand we have this objective of really strong growth. Hum badna chahte hain, grow karna chahte hain economy ko. And on the other hand, we have a large young population, and employment is a big issue. And the third objective, which we also heard about earlier, there is a significant export potential we want to realize as we grow. Now, if we were to take a step back, and uh, you know, I've been regional CEO in Asia Pacific for this and group. I've seen what many of the other economies, so-called tiger nations, and also you know, Japan, Korea, ANZ, what they have been doing. <clears throat> what is very uh, fundamental to strong economic growth is competitiveness in two sectors. One is steel, the other is power. And if we have a competitive steel sector, and when I say competitive, I mean a cost of steel, which is the lowest amongst all competing nations. And if we have power, which is the cheapest amongst all competing nations, by default, we will have manufacturing, which will be the most competitive amongst all nations, because we already know labor cost in India is perhaps one of the most competitive. So this is why this discussion is so important. We need to be able to produce steel at a much, much lower rate compared to all of our competitive nations. And this is why I think uh, it's such an important discussion. And uh, I want to congratulate Dr. Nawal uh, and Mr. Sharma and Mr. Dar. I think all of you have brought out absolutely the right points. Uh, but let me supplement that with a few additional points from my side. Firstly, I think I was on a similar panel on mining and with the Joint Secretary uh, for Mines, uh, with the Secretary for Mines. And a very interesting point came out as I moderated that session. Our cost of mining is one of the most competitive in the world, but our cost of logistics is one of the worst in the world. So what happens is at the entry point of a factory, the cost of coal, the cost of iron ore, whatever it may be, simply becomes much higher compared to what it was at the pithead. And then this has an amazing cascading impact in a negative way on the competitiveness of all downstream industries. And I come from capital goods. We manufacture equipment. We supply uh, back to the steel industry. We are working with JSW. We are working with JS, uh, JSPL with all the major players. And this is, this is the first observation that we have. Competitiveness in our price of steel is hurting. Uh, or the lack high prices are hurting us in our competitiveness uh, globally and also in India. What can we do about this? I think apart from the myriad of points that have been made, uh, all very valid point, I also want to focus on, uh, bring the focus back on technology. So if we look at mining per se, uh, you know, what we look at is a very old school way of mining even today. We are still using dumpers, and you know it's a truck and shovel kind of approach that we still have but there are proven examples it is well documented with mechanization there is a opportunity to save up to 20 percent in opex cost and uh, these technologies you know are available now for 15 20 years even longer in some cases so even things like, you know, earlier, uh, you know, there was a necessity to go around a pit head with trucks all the way from the bottom to the top. The angle you can cover is three degrees. Today, there are steep angle conveyors which can cover 30 degree slopes without battling an eyelid. And that has a tremendous impact on your extraction cost. So this is, uh, you know, mechanization is something I would really encourage all the industry players to adopt. And this is also something I would request the ministries to also encourage uh, by, by you know, really setting the standards and also facilitating this. The spin-off is with more greater mechanization, which is also electrified. You're avoiding the consumption of diesel, which is also a logistics challenge, you know, to bring diesel and fuel into a remote uh, site location and manage that is, a, is in itself a big challenge. 
So electrification is possible uh, with the mechanization that we introduce, which will simplify the overall logistics scenario significantly. The other part is, uh, and uh, Dr. Navar touched upon it, and I was very impressed by, uh, by his points, is really the conveyor uh, technologies. And today, what can be achieved with OLBCs, Overland Belt Conveyors, and with uh, pipe conveyors is incredible. And we heard the example of a 24-kilometer pipe conveyor by JSW. Um, you know, and other players are really taking this up. But industry as a whole needs to adopt this, uh, you know, significantly. Uh, because again, the trade-off is CapEx versus OpEx, but the OpEx advantage really leads to a far more competitive product, which allows you to be competitive despite the cyclicality in the industry. And we know steel is a highly cyclical industry. So occupying a low end of the cost curve is a tremendous advantage to overcome cyclicality. The third thing I want to emphasize here is, uh, you know, apart from both of these is also uh, rethinking and reimagining the ways of, uh, you know, doing certain things. There are um, currently, you know, there's a strong, uh, you know, uh, the, India traditionally has been, uh, you know, working with people kind of a model. But what we are pushing through is a working with KPIs kind of a model. So focus on performance. And this is something that we are pushing through across the value chain uh, in mining, in material handling, even in steel sector, uh, where we are emphasizing that you know there are certain material handling logistics uh, aspects on the inbound side where we can guarantee availability, where we can guarantee performance, where we can guarantee costs, uh, which provides a lot of stability in the steel sector for them to continue to run their operations in a very, very competitive way. So uh, these are some of the ideas. And lastly, I would say, you know, I mentioned briefly the power side of it, and power is an important input into steel as well. So there are two things uh, that I want to mention there. One is definitely look at waste heat recovery, uh, you know, that is a spin off, uh, which can help bring down the overall cost of power. Uh, and uh, what the price at which we are seeing waste heat recovery is one rupee a unit. So one rupee a unit compared to 12 to 14, uh, which is, you know, uh, some of the panelists spoke about is incredibly, you know, cheap, even cheaper than what you can get out of solar as of today. So definitely, I think we should look towards that. The other part is uh, looking at rejects. So there are, during the mining process, uh, you know, we talked about coal gasification, but also in the washery process, there are significant rejects. And if you are using that in uh, CFBC boilers, then again, your cost of power generation can, can be to the tune of two to three rupees a unit, sometimes even lower. So therefore, I think uh, if we put all of these things together, if we bring, uh, you know, mechanization to reduce OPEX cost, if we introduce uh, conveying technology to reduce logistics costs, if we combine that with a lower cost of power, then I think we will be able to create uh, a very, very competitive steel sector. And I personally believe, I mean, why 300 million tons? I mean, India should be much larger than that compared to where we are uh, in terms of uh, the need for infrastructure the need for uh, growth. And I personally believe uh, steel is really, you know, it, it is the anchor point of a strong and vib vibrant economic growth. This is the first sector that even China built up. If you look at Korea, they really built up a very strong steel sector around POSCO. If you look at Japan a few years earlier, again, uh, that was built around a very robust steel sector. So we have to bring all this focus and attention on steel and its competitiveness for really achieving our 5 trillion uh, you know, uh, target for the economy. And also more importantly, to guarantee or drive up employment for the youth in our country. So with those words, uh, I hand it back to you, Mr. Chakravarti, and hopefully it was brief and fast and to the point. Absolutely, uh, Mr. Bhatia. It was really very precise from your end. You have made some key points. The most important one that struck me personally is that we probably need to introspect the way that we have been doing our businesses. And there is enough scope to rethink and reimagine, especially with the use of technology like AI, Industry 4.0, and et cetera. 
that how it can actually debottleneck a lot of the things that we probably uh, are uh, kind of uh, firefighting mein jo hum log busy rehte hain on a day to day basis it can really free us all from all that thank you so much for that now uh, last but not the least the most important one and mantri mahoday uh, uh, aapko main kya batau you know the industry ke bare mein uh, much more that what sort of issues the industry is facing uh, just uh, hamara discussion ko uh, focus rakhne ke uh, ummeed ke uh, matlab us objective ke liye if i may just make some five six key points uh, jo aap uh, shayad apna speech mein aise hi cover karenge ek to hai raw material allocation which is being driven at the state government level aeronaut boliye chromite boliye Uh, bauxite and many other things that is happening bauxite is not for steel but iron ore chromite etc that is happening in a fair and transparent manner to the extent it can be and probably other improvements will come over time second is about definitely the logistics and the forward and backward linkages focus on uh, value addition uh, through focusing on the downstream जो मेरा पार कैपिटल कंजम्पन को बढ़ाएगा हैविंग अ मास्टर प्लान इन दैट रिगार्ड ताकि ईच क्लास्टर के लिए प्लान हो ताकि स्टेट्स कैन वर्क अक्रॉस वेरी कोलेबोरेटिवली टू वर्क ऑन दिस लाइक द ईस्टर्न स्टेट्स लाइक द पूर्वोदया प्रोजेक्ट दैट हैज बीन कॉन्सेप्चुअलाइज टू फोकस ऑन वेस्ट बंगाल उड़ीसा झारखंड छत्तीसगढ़ टुगेदर द थर्ड पॉइंट इज हमारा टैक्स इंसिडेंस इज वेरी हाई one of the highest in the world be it on the iron ore side or overall steel production side tax incidence is really very high and there are some low hanging fruits jisko hum log optimize kar sakte hain which can actually free up and bring down the delivered cost per ton of steel fourth hamare liye capacity expansion jo financing wala issue hai uske liye naya kya options hum log leke aa sakte hain on the table ताकि आगे जाके जो भी ये एक्सपेंशन प्लान सोचा जा रहा है वो फ्रूटफुल हो फाइनेंसिंग के चक्कर में अटक ना जाए हो सकता है हम लोगों को इंटरनेशनल प्लेयर्स को भी इनवाइट uh, करना चाहिए सो दैट दे आल्सो कम एंड पार्टिसिपेट एंड बिल्ड दिस कैपेसिटी नॉट जस्ट द जे एस डब्ल्यू एंड जे एस पी एल एंड टाटा स्टील मे बी दॉस्को एंड अदर्स शुड ऑल्सो कम इन जस्ट थॉट ऑन द टेबल द फिफ्थ इज डेफिनेटली Uh, the trading platform we do not have any very transparent acceptable trading platform especially looking at the plight of the secondary steel players jo bade players hain uske paas to sales and marketing is anyway very strong they have capacity to build but jo mera 40 45% overall capacity mein jo secondary steel sector players hain uske liye agar koi e market place ho जहाँ पे बी टू बी एज वेल एज बी टू सी ट्रांजेक्शन स्मूथली हो सके इन अ फेयर एंड ट्रांसपेरेंट मैनर एंड द प्राइसेस विल बी डिटर्मिन फ्रॉम डिमांड सप्लाई ओके वो एक सो दीज आर सम ऑफ द थॉट्स दैट वी हैड प्लस यू हैव हम आप तो बाकी एमिनेंट स्पीकर से ऑलरेडी सुने हैं सर सो नाउ वी रिक्वेस्ट यू आपसे अनुरोध करते हैं कि आपका जो थाट्स हैं इफ यू कैन काइंडली शेयर विद अस and all years to you sir over to you sir dhanwad all ji global value chain backward and forward integration is vaishvik virtual sammelan mein vaishvik mool shrinkla agami aur agragami ekikrat इस्पात उद्योग के लिए आपूर्ति श्रृंखला के जरिए मूल सृजन और विशेषकर आज इसे वैश्विक वर्चुअल रैली में इस सम्मेलन में हमारे एसोचम के अध्यक्ष श्री विनीत अग्रवाल जी हमारे श्री विद्युत चक्रवर्ती जी निदेशक माइनिंग एंड मेटल वाइजरी ए पी एम जी डॉक्टर विनोद नोवल जी की मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर श्री साहू जी जनरल मैनेजर 
ਅੱਜ ਹੋਰ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਪੀ ਆਰ ਸ਼ਰਮਾ ਜੀ ਮੈਨੇਜਿੰਗ ਡਾਇਰੈਕਟਰ ਜੀਐਸਪੀਐਲ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਵਿਵੇਕ ਵਾਟੀਆ ਜੀ ਐਮਡੀ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਜਨ ਹਰਜੀ ਔਰ ਯਹਾਂ ਇਸ ਵਰਚੁਅਲ ਸੰਮੇਲਨ ਮੇ ਉਪਸਥਿਤ ਸਭੀ ਦੇਵੀ ਔਰ ਸਜਨੋ ਆਜ ਵਿਸ਼ੇਸ਼ ਕਰ ਮੇ ਹਮਾਰੇ ਸਭੀ ਦੋਨੋ ਕਾ ਔਰ ਵਿਸ਼ੇਸ਼ ਕਰ ਸੈਕਟਰ ਮੇ ਮਾਈਨਿੰਗ ਕੇ ਸੈਕਟਰ ਮੇ ਅਲੱਗ ਅਲੱਗ ਜੋ ਹਮਾਰੇ ਸਪੀਕਰ ਸੇ ਉਨਕੋ ਵੀ ਮੈਨੇ ਸੁਨਾ ਹੈ ਸਭਸੇ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਮੈਂ ਆਪ ਸਭ ਕੋ ਨਮਸਕਾਰ ਕਰਤਾ ਹੂੰ ਔਰ ਵਿਸ਼ੇਸ਼ ਕਰ ਸਭਸੇ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਐਸੋਚਮ ਕੋ ਕਿਸੇ ਸਮੂਚੇ ਸਪਤਾਹ ਕੇ ਇਸ ਦੌਰਾਨ ਵੈਸ਼ਵਿਕ ਮੂਲ ਸੰਖਰਾ ਪਰ ਆਧਾਰਿਤ ਇਸ ਅਪੂਰਵ ਸੀਰੀ ਕਾ ਆਯੋਜਨ ਕਰਨੇ ਕੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਦੇਣਾ ਚਾਹਤਾ ਹੂੰ ਔਰ ਵਿਗਤ ਕੁਝ ਵਰਸ਼ੋਂ ਮੈਂ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਕੀ ਨੀਤੀਓ ਮੇ ਮਹੱਤਵਪੂਰਨ ਪਰਿਵਰਤਨ ਆਇਆ ਤਾਂਕਿ ਵੈਸ਼ਵਿਕ ਪ੍ਰਤਿਸਪਰਧਾਤਮਕ ਕੋ ਪ੍ਰਭਾਵੀ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਲੇ ਮੁੱਦੋਂ ਮੇ ਸੇ ਕੁਝ ਮੁੱਦੋਂ ਪਰ ਧਿਆਨ ਦਿਆ ਜਾ ਸਕੇ ਆਤਮ ਨਿਰਭਰ ਭਾਰਤ ਦੀ ਅਵਧਾਰਣਾ ਕਾ ਪ੍ਰਮੁੱਖ ਆਧਾਰ ਸਵਦੇਸ਼ੀ ਉਦਯੋਗਾਂ ਕੇ ਗਤੀਵਿਧੀ ਖੇਤਰ ਕੋ ਘਰੇਲੂ ਬਾਜ਼ਾਰ ਕੀ ਪਰਿਸ਼ੀਮਾਉਂ ਸੇ ਬਾਹਰ ਵਿਸਤਾਰਿਤ ਕਰਨੇ और वैश्विक मूल श्रृंखला में सने सने प्रवेश करने की इसकी क्षमता है किसी भी प्रतिस्पर्धात्मक वैश्विक बाजार में संगठनों द्वारा आगत को ध्यान में रखते हुए कच्चे माल की त्वरित उपलब्धता के साथ अपनी लॉजिस्टिक लागत में अनिवार्य रूप से कमी लानी चाहिए भारत में लॉजिस्टिक लागत जीडीपी का 15 से 16% है जबकि अमेरिका जापान चीन जैसे अन्य देशों में यह जीडीपी का 7 आपूर्ति करता की लागत को कम करने के लिए कई इस्पात उद्योगों ने सस्ती और संपोषणीय लागत पर सामग्री की उपलब्धता के लिए अपने विनिर्माण स्थलों को समुद्री बंदरगाह अथवा संयोजक स्थलों के नजदीक स्थानांतरित करना शुरू कर दिया है और इसलिए अभी पाजी जब बोल रहे थे उस समय तो हमारे सारे उससे वोट की बात वो कर रहे थे हमने बंदरगाहों की जब बात कर रहे थे और निश्चित तौर से इसके बारे में आप सबको याद होगा कि हमने जितने भी इस प्रकार के स्थलों का चयन भी किया और नजदीकी स्थानांतरित करना शुरू कर दिया है धीरे-धीरे हम इसके विस्तार में भी आगे जाना चाहते हैं जैसे-जैसे हमारे पास इसकी संभावनाएं और आप लोगों के जो सजेशंस भी आ रहे हैं उनको भी ध्यान में रखते हुए इन सब परिस्थितियों के बारे में चिंता करना ताकि ट्रांसपोर्टिंग के क्षेत्र में हम इसको और कैसे व्यवस्थित कर सकते हैं यह हमारी कोशिश है जैसा कि आप जानते हैं कि एक टन फिनिश्ड इस्पात के उत्पादन एवं उसे अंतिम उपभोक्ता तक पहुंचाने के लिए लगभग 4 टन मटेरियल का ढुलाई किया जाता है और इसलिए माननीय प्रधानमंत्री श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में हमारी सरकार क्लस्टर आधारित उद्योग लगाने पर काम कर रही है हमारी सरकार उद्योगों को बढ़ावा देने एवं आपूर्ति श्रृंखला को मजबूत करने के लिए नेशनल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोजेक्टों पर 1.1 लाख करोड़ से ज्यादा की राशि खर्च कर रही है आयरन ओर की ढुलाई को सुगम बनाने के लिए इसलरी पाइपलाइन का निर्माण किया जा रहा है जो कि सरकारी क्षेत्र की कंपनियों के साथ निजी क्षेत्र की कंपनियों के द्वारा लगाया जा रहा है और अभी तक के प्रोजेक्ट के आधार पर 
लगभग पच्चीस हजार करोड़ रुपए खर्च होगा हमारी सरकार लॉजिस्टिक को मजबूत करने के लिए डेडिकेटेड फ्रेंड कॉरिडोर सबरीमाला जैसे अन्य परियोजनाओं पर काम कर रही है जिसे माल ढुलाई में सुगमता से उत्पाद की लागत कम होगी तथा समय की बचत होगी और प्रतिस्पर्धी बनेगा आप सब जानते हैं कि अभी इस बात के लिए भी आप लोगों ने सागर मोला के बारे में भी वाटर वेज के बारे में भी आप लोगों ने कहा निश्चित तौर से हम इस बात के लिए प्रयास कर रहे हैं और इसी का ये कि स्टिक को मजबूत करने के लिए उनको फ्रंट कॉरिडोर ये जो सबरीमाला का एक कल्पना प्रधानमंत्री जी और हमारे जो संबंधित मंत्रालय के मंत्री जी हैं इन सबको ध्यान में देते हुए हम आगे बढ़ रहे हैं और मैं कह सकता हूं कि जिस समय हमारे माल ढुलाई में सुगमता और विशेषकर इंडस्ट्री के चाहे रॉ मटेरियल्स को उसको और कैसे हम प्रतिस्पर्धी बनाए ये हमारा एक प्रयास है आपूर्ति श्रृंखला बेंच मार्किंग कार्यक्रम हरमों को आपूर्ति श्रृंखलाओं में बाधाओं को दूर करने और आवश्यक कार्य निष्पादन संबंधी सुधारों को आगे बढ़ाने में सक्षम बनाता है चूंकि आपूर्ति श्रृंखला संबंधी ये प्रचालनात्मक होते हैं इसलिए लागत चक्रकाल माल सूची और कार्यशील पूंजी में पर्याप्त बचत का इसम उपयोग किया जा सकता है हमने इस बात की भी कोशिश किया है कि सभी हमारे आपूर्ति श्रृंखला को मार्किंग कैसे हम और अच्छा बेहतर बना सकते हैं इसके सुधारों को भी आगे बढ़ाने के लिए हम सक्षम होता है जैसे कि लागत चक्रवाल माल सूची और कार्यशैली पूंजी में पर्याप्त बचत का इष्टम उपयोग किया जा सकता है आज की अत्याधिक प्रतिस्पर्धी और वैश्विक बाजार में ग्राहकों के लिए उपयोगी सेवा सृजित और प्रदान करने के नए तरीके खोजने के लिए संगठनों पर दबाव और भी बढ़ जाता है वैश्विक बाजार में कीमत गुणवत्ता और सेवा संबंधी आयामों के संदर्भ में अपने उत्पादों के साथ प्रतिस्पर्धा करने की उद्योग की बढ़ती हुई आवश्यकता से परंपरागत रूप से प्रयुक्त प्रणाली की तुलना में अधिक कुशल लॉजिस्टिक प्रणाली विकसित करने की आवश्यकता उत्पन्न हुई है और इसलिए आप जानते हैं कि ये जो हमारे मार्केट में जिस प्रकार की प्रतिस्पर्धा करने की उद्योगों की बढ़ती हुई आवश्यकता को ध्यान में रखते हुए हमारे लॉजिस्टिक प्रणाली विकसित करने की आवश्यकता जो महसूस हम कर रहे हैं निश्चित तौर से इसकी जरूरत है वर्तमान में भारत सरकार भारत इस्पात क्षेत्र में मूल श्रृंखला के निचले स्तर पर प्रचालन करता है मूल संवर्धित इस्पात ग्रेड भारत में बड़े पैमाने पर आयात किए जाते हैं ऐसा उच्चतर लॉजिस्टिक और अवसंरचना लागत उच्चतर बिजली एवं पूंजीगत लागत और करों एवं शुल्कों की वजह से इस्पात उद्योग में इस्पात की लागत ज्यादा होती है और प्रॉफिट मार्जिन कम होती है छह करोड़ रुपए के बजटी परवे के साथ पीएलआई योजना भारतीय इस्पात क्षेत्र को आवश्यक गति प्रदान करेगी और मैं कह सकता हूं कि जैसा हम अनुभव करते हैं और हमने कहा भी है कि ऐसे उच्चतर लॉजिस्टिक और अवसंरचना लागत उच्चतर बिजली एवं पूंजीगत लागत और करों एवं शुल्कों की जो वजह से इस्पात उद्योगों में इस्पात की लागत ज्यादा होती है ये बात मैंने स्पष्ट तौर से भी ध्यान में आया है और मैं कुछ मामलों में विदेशी भागीदारों के सहयोग से नई प्रौद्योगिकी के समावेश द्वारा स्थानीय आवश्यकता को 
पूरा करने के लिए घरेलू उद्योग की बढ़ती हुई क्षमता जिसके परिणाम स्वरूप अधिक मूल्य संवर्धित उत्पादों की उपलब्धता हुई और यहां तक कि क्षमता में वृद्धि हुई स्पष्ट रूप से भारत के औद्योगिकरण में एक नए अध्याय को इंगित करते हैं और यह हमारा एक प्रयास होगा कि परिणाम स्वरूप अधिक मूल संवर्धित उत्पादकों की उपलब्धता आज धीरे धीरे बढ़ी है आसियान देशों जिनके साथ भारत ने एफटीए पर हस्ताक्षर किए हैं से आयात जैसे चुनौतियां बढ़ रही हैं जिनमें से कुछ आयात चीन के मार्ग से होकर किए जाते हैं भारतीय पूंजीगत वस्तु उद्योग को घरेलू स्रोतों से मूल संवर्धित उत्पादों से बढ़े इन वस्तुओं का उत्पादन करने के लिए स्वदेशी क्षमता विकसित करनी चाहिए प्रधानमंत्री जी की इच्छा है कि इस दिशा में जो हमारे बड़े बड़े ऐसे उद्योग हैं भारतीय पूंजीगत के लोगों को घरेलू स्रोत जो हमारे स्थानीय आधार पर जो निर्मित किए जाते हैं उनके मूल संबंधित उत्पादकों से बनने वाले इन वस्तुओं का उत्पादन करने के लिए हम निश्चित तौर से स्वदेशी क्षमता विकसित करना चाहिए इसके लिए हम सतत प्रयास कर रहे हैं और यही हमारे आत्मनिर्भर भारत की जो कल्पना प्रधानमंत्री जी ने किया है कि हम इस दिशा में आगे बढ़ करके स्थानीय लोगों को अवसर प्रदान करेंगे ताकि स्थानीय लोगों को रोजगार भी मिले यह हमारी संकल्पना है और मैं संगठनों को नैतिक सोर्सिंग प्रैक्टिस को अपनाने की आवश्यकता है और इसलिए उन्हें उच्च आर्थिक सामाजिक एवं पर्यावरणीय मूल्य वाले आपूर्ति कर्ताओं का चयन करना चाहिए और उनके साथ कार्य करना चाहिए हमें प्रचलन प्रचालन प्रबंधन की एक सिद्धांत पर स्मरण करना चाहिए केवल कुछ आपूर्तिकर्ताओं के साथ एक स्थिर साझेदारी आमतौर पर अधिक लाभदायक होती है चयन की प्रक्रिया के साथ समान मूल्यों एवं प्रचालन प्रणालियों वाले आपूर्तिकर्ताओं पर भरोसा किया जा सकता है और यहां तक कि लंबी अवधि तक एक साथ आगे बढ़ा जा सकता है अभी आप सभी लोगों ने कई ऐसे महत्वपूर्ण सुझाव दिए हैं मैंने उनको नोट भी किया है मैं निश्चित तौर से जो आप लोगों ने कहा है कि पावर सेक्टर हमारे स्पेंसर अनेक ऐसे क्षेत्रों में बंदरगाहों के बारे में हमारे उसके बारे में और मैं कह सकता हूं कि जिन जिन क्षेत्रों में आपने शिपिंग का पोर्ट्स का पावर सेक्टर को आगे बढ़ाने के बारे में यूपीए कंट्रियों की तुलना आप लोगों ने किया है मैं ये कह सकता हूं कि इसको लेकर के हम जरूर इसकी चिंता करेंगे और मैं जब ये आपका डिस्कशन हो पैनल डिस्कशन के समय कई ऐसे महत्वपूर्ण विषय भी आएंगे जो हमारे पैनलिस्ट हैं वो इस दिशा में जब चर्चा करेंगे तो मुझे लगता है कि और भी सार्थक पहल इस दिशा में होकर के मंत्रालय निश्चित आप लोगों के सुझावों पर चिंता व्यक्त करेगी और हम आगे बढ़कर के देश के विकास में और विशेषकर इंडस्ट्री सेक्टर को आगे बढ़ाएंगे हम लोकल रोज ग्लोबल और मेक इन इंडिया फॉरवर्ड के लिए माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी के इस विजन के लिए औद्योगिक सहायता की आशा कर रहे हैं जिससे वास्तविक सकल घरेलू उत्पाद में विनिर्माण क्षेत्र की हिस्सेदारी बढ़कर 25 परसेंट तक हो सकती है और निर्यात 400 मिलियन अमेरिकी डॉलर तक बढ़ सकती है मैं आप सभी लोगों को मैं बधाई देना चाहता हूं विशेषकर इन शब्दों के साथ एसोचम ने जो प्रयास किए हैं और अपनी बातों को काम देने के पहले मैं चाहूंगा 
की प्रमुख औद्योगिक क्षेत्रों पर आधारित इस वैश्विक मूल श्रृंखला सम्मेलन की सफलता के लिए इसके आयोजन के लिए और इस्पात क्षेत्र से संबंधित मुद्दे जिनका देश के विनिर्माण आधारित विकास पर दूरगामी प्रभाव पड़े पड़ता है आने के लिए एसोचम को मैं बधाई देना चाहता हूं कि आपने एक बहुत महत्वपूर्ण सुझाव इस क्षेत्र में और इस वर्चुअल सम्मेलन के माध्यम से आप लोगों ने इसको शुरुआत किया है मैं सोचम के उन मित्रों को भी बधाई देता हूं और जो सजेशन आप लोगों ने दिया है मैंने उनको नोट किया है परंतु जब अंतिम जब ये आपका सम्मेलन समाप्त हो और मेन जो हमारे फोकस अरेंज से उनको भी मैं चाहता हूं कि आप समराइज करते हुए एक जरूर हमको रिपोर्ट भेजेंगे ताकि इस पर पूरा ध्यान दिया जा सके और मंत्रालय की ओर से जो प्रयास किए जा सकते हैं प्रधानमंत्री जी की जिस प्रकार की संकल्पना है उसको ध्यान में रखते हुए हम जरूर इसके बारे में प्रयास करेंगे आपकी जो जरूरतें हैं आज की जो आवश्यकता है रिक्वायरमेंट से उसको हम पूरा करने में सफल होंगे ऐसा विश्वास दिलाते हुए मैं आप सभी मित्रों को विशेषकर हमारे सम के रमन अग्रवाल साहब को और उस पूरी टीम को बहुत बहुत बधाई देता हूँ धन्यवाद नमस्कार मंत्री महोदय असंख्य धन्यवाद हम लोग आभारी हैं आपसे ये बहुत रीअस्यूरिंग वर्ड्स हम लोगों ने सुना आपने बताया अबाउट द थॉट्स द स्पेसिफिक फोकस द ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर हैज ऑन द नेशनल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोजेक्ट यहाँ पे मोर देन वन लैख करोर ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट इज एनी वे ये इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोजेक्ट इट्स हमारा जो डिमांड है फॉर स्टील सीमेंट एंड अदर थिंग्स जिसको आगे लेके जाएगा डिमांड ग्रोथ लाएगा जिसके वजह से स्टील बोलिए सीमेंट बोलिए एंड द रिलेटेड जो भी अपस्ट्रीम का रिक्वायरमेंट्स है बी इट आयरन ओर और क्रोमाइट और लाइम स्टोन एट्सेट्रा इनका डिमांड बढ़ेगा so it's a very very we are very thankful for conceptualization of this uh, specific project aapne hame ye bhi bataya the kind of integrated master plan and the planning that is going on be it the slurry pipeline network or the dedicated freight corridor or sagar mala bharat mala jo specific flagship programs hai government ka we just hope कि द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन फोकस इज एनहेंस देयर ताकि ये सब प्रोग्राम जो कॉन्सेप्चुअली वेरी वेरी गुड इन प्रैक्टिस एंड इन रियलिटी आल्सो द सेम द स्पेसिफिक ऑब्जेक्टिव्स आर मेट ताकि इम्प्लीमेंटेशन में स्पेसिफिक फोकस रहे अलोंग विद क्वालिटी आपने जॉब क्रिएशन के ऊपर भी क्या फोकस है बोथ फॉर डिरेक्ट एंड इनडायरेक्ट जॉब्स ये भी हमें बताया and i am sure the respective state government while having their individual plans and aspiration for the state are keeping this in mind and working closely with the ministry of steel and the central government in this regard aapne hame ye bhi bataya ki esg jo aajkal charche mein hai the ethical business not just from environmental perspective but the social obligations as well as the sound governance that every company has to follow corporate governance be it the sevi 49 guidelines or any other it has become so much important today to have trust of all the stakeholders in the in the business which will help taki aage ja ke sustainable and profitable growth ho sake of this particular sector we heard you sir we have also heard that asocham on behalf of asocham and the iron and steel national council dr nawal is there mr sharma mr dhar and everyone we will definitely summarize our thoughts aaj ke discussion mein kafi kuch important mudde discuss hue hain jisko samne lekar aap aaye hain in the last and last one and half hour by all of us we will definitely summarize and through asocham would like to submit it to your office taki aap inke upar जैसा आपको ठीक लगे उस हिसाब से इसको आगे लेके जा सकें वी आर वेरी वेरी ग्रेटफुल आभारी है हम लोग 
कि आपने हमारे साथ टाइम बिताया एंड uh, हमारा बात सुना एंड देन वी ऑल्सो हार्ड फ्रॉम हार्ड योर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू तो रियली वेरी वेरी थैंकफुल टू यू सर फॉर स्पेंडिंग टाइम विद अस टुडे थैंक यू सो मच डॉक्टर नोवाल इफ आई मे नाउ रिक्वेस्ट यू टू शेयर एनी कंक्लूडिंग रिमार्क्स श्री महोदय एक बार आपका पुनः पुनः धन्यवाद जो आपने मार्गदर्शन दिया क्योंकि 300 मिलियन टन कैपेसिटी अगले नौ साल में पूरी करनी है बहुत बड़ी चैलेंजिंग है पर इंडिया कैपेबल है इंडस्ट्रीज भी कैपेबल हैं पर जो लॉजिस्टिक के चैलेंजेस हैं और जो जो नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज हैं उसकी अवेलेबिलिटी के जो चैलेंजेज हैं इस दो चीज के ऊपर हमें गवर्नमेंट का पूरा साथ और मार्गदर्शन चाहिए अदरवाइज इंडियन इंडस्ट्री सील इंडस्ट्री इज वेरी कैपेबल टू टू हैंडल इट एंड प्रूव इट कि वी कैन मेक इट 300 मिलियन टन कैपेसिटी वी कैन क्रिएट व्हिच इज द ड्रीम ऑफ द प्राइम मिनिस्टर अंडर योर लीडरशिप एंड इट इज पॉसिबल एंड वी वी नीड योर गाइडेंस एंड सपोर्ट ऑन दिस तो टुगेदर वी कैन अचीव इट थैंक्स फॉर योर कमिंग एंड गाइडिंग अस सो we are sharma ji has explained everything in more details and i don't think it requires more to explain and you also endorse everything in your speech aapne apne bhashan mein sab cheezon ka jo ullekh kiya hai aur jis tarah ke jo commitment aapne diya hai aapki speech se usse lagta hai ki bhi hum log is area mein bad payenge aur achieve kar payenge aapka bahut bahut dhanyawad thank you and i am taking this opportunity dr nawal to thank you to mr sharma mr dhar mr baikanto sahu uh, mr uh, anil kumar sood uh, mr vivek bhatia all the eminent speakers as well as the larger group of attendees who attended today's session we are really very thankful to all of you for making this a success so uh, seri jaydev over to you thank you so much for the opportunity providing to me um, uh, for moderating this eminent panel thank you so much thank you thank you jaydeep seri over to you please 